Well, hello for you, and welcome to graphing the secondary trig ratios. Our goal today, I can use the graph of the primary trig ratios to graph the secondary trig ratios. So we're not going to dwell too much on the reciprocal trig functions. Uh, we'll complete this exercise on how to graph the reciprocal trig functions based on their primary counterparts, um, and then we'll uh, sort of call it a day. Um, this is going to be very, very quick, but hopefully you understand it and can complete um, the couple of exercises on it. We have to remember what the secondary trig ratios are and they're just the primary trig ratios flipped over. So if y equals cosecant x is equivalent to 1 over sine x, um, then sine x is uh, y equals sine x is also the equivalent to y equals 1 over cosecant x. We just flip them over. And that means that the y values are the reciprocals of each other, just the y values. Okay, we don't do anything with the x, we leave the x the same, um, and we flip over the y values. So how are we going to do that if we've already got a function? Well, let's take a look here. What are the x and y values at this point? Well, the x point is 0, and the y value is 0. Now, I'm going to leave the 0 the same, but I have to flip over 0. What happens if I try to flip over 0, which we can say is 0 over 1? It turns into 1 over 0. And hopefully you know by now that you cannot divide by 0. So when you divide by 0, you get something that's infinite. And that actually means that if we do that, we get a asymptote. And that's going to happen anywhere where I had a 0. Here, my y value is 0. And if I flip over 0, I get infinity, which is an asymptote. So here's another zero that turns into an asymptote. And over here, here's another zero here that turns into an asymptote. And one more time, here's a zero here that turns into an asymptote. Okay, so our zeros turn into asymptotes. Frankly, it would, it would happen the other way around too. If I had an asymptote, which sine doesn't have but tan does, and you're gonna be graphing it shortly. If I have an asymptote, um, when you flip over infinity, if you say, I'm going to flip over infinity, uh, I have 1 over infinity, well, 1 over infinity is actually 0. So if you flip over infinity, turn infinity into 1 over infinity, you actually get 0. So asymptotes turn into zeros, and zeros turn into asymptotes. Well, what happens to other points here? Well, let's just look at easy points. I'm going to look at, and let's see, I'm going to do this in blue. Uh, I'm going to look at this one here. This is the point 1. When I flip over 1, I get 1. And down here, when I flip over negative 1, if I've got negative 1 over 1, when I flip it over, I get 1 over negative 1, which is still just negative 1. When you flip over 1s, you don't change anything. And when you flip over negative 1s, you don't change anything. So these points here, are all on the cosecant too when I flip them over. Let's find something a little bit more interesting here, shall we? How about right here where I've got this 0.5? What happens when I flip over 0.5? Well, if you, 0.5 is 1 half, and if I flip it over, I get 2. So this point here on this graph, I'm going to erase it, the x stays the same, so I've got to stay, stay in the same x value as that, but it's going to become 2. So it's up here. And same thing's going to happen when I'm at a half here. So I'm at a half right there. When I flip over a half, I get 2. So I'm going to go up. Got to keep the x's the same. They're going to all line up. So I get 2. Now that's going to happen, again, anywhere I have an, a half or anywhere I have a negative a half right down here. If I flip over negative a half, I get negative 2. So that's going to be right there. And over here, if I flip over negative a half, right here, that's negative a half, negative a half, I get negative two. And so you can sort of see what's happening here. It's getting closer, and you know what happens at asymptotes. It's going to get closer and closer to the asymptote, getting closer and closer to either positive infinity up here or negative infinity down here. So we're going to have that like that kind of looks parabolic there, like that. 
And that's going to happen in all of these places. There's my half, and so that's going to be negative 2. And there's my half, so that's going to be negative 2. And we can draw that in there. And once more here, this is at a half, so that's going to be 2 up here. And this is going to go like this. And we're good. Okay, That is actually what cosecant looks like right there just like that um all of these asymptotes and then close it goes whoop 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 i'm going to show it to you on desmos so again here's what it looks like at, on desmos um and that's without the sign on top of it if i want to put sign underneath it y equals sign x um there's what it looks like and you can see that that, that these points here when i have um, anytime I have a zero, it turns into an asymptote that's getting really close to it. Uh, I'm going to take a look at this one here, this one that's at two. Um, see, it was at uh, it. What? Let's get that off there. Um, here was our half mark. So when I've got a half right there, um, it's at. It says it's 0.479, but that's. Um, Let's actually here. Let's get it on a half. No, it can't get it on a half. Okay. Um, when we've got the point four seven nine, and when we move right up above it, it's basically two, uh, and it's it's really two. It's just it's hard to tell on Desmos here um, because it rounds everything. And notice that all of these points here, when I have one, when I flipped it over, the the places where there was one on the sign, it's there on the uh, on the cosecant as well. So you just have to flip over the y values to get the uh, um, to get the values on the cosecant. Okay. So back to this, the reciprocal trig functions. Uh, what I want you to do now is take a look. This is secant. I want you to repeat the process for secant uh, and put all of your like, do the same thing that I did up here, uh, and then I want you to try and do it for cotan on this one here as well. Uh, and then you have a couple of questions to do here, uh, and that's it.